So I did some thinking lately about um, about Google in general and their and their products and services and so forth. I recently came across an article that was suggesting uh, sometime last year, I believe, that we could be seeing the Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 inside of Chromebooks before the end of this year. I think that is a brilliant move because if the Android apps are going to run smoothly on a Chromebook, then they should run on Snapdragon because Snapdragon powers the majority of uh, Android phones in the United States. So I just think that that's just a natural uh natural breeding ground, natural home for Chrome OS. And I just think that that could be, that I, I that would be brilliant, I think. And also, another thing too is this Fuchsia OS that's that uh, keeps getting rumored and whether, you know, when we're going to see it, who knows. Um, but that, I don't know what that's going to be, but what would be interesting is to see is Chrome OS taking the place of Android on phones, you would get the um, overall security and ease of use of Chrome with the flexibility of the Android apps. And rather than bog down the phone with skins from manufacturers, they could just preload apps um, pertaining to their own services. And you could have, like, like we have in front of the screen now, we have a dock here at the bottom you could do the same sort of thing by simply adding in a phone and messages app, and you could have a collection of apps uh, down at the bottom, or you could have, um, you know, your your typical app grid, which if you have a convertible Chromebook, you just flip it over and you activate the um, the start menu, or the uh, search menu rather, and it would bring up a grid of icons. Um, or if you're simply, if you're on the home screen, it'll just display those icons by default. I think that Chrome OS just shrinking down into a phone from its tablet, uh, variant once the kinks are worked out. Okay. Cause I know, I know that things are a bit bumpy, but I think that in the long run, that would be an interesting move to see. Something else that would be interesting to see is, um, my is it's the experience that one would have with a smart display i am considering a google home hub for my birthday and um there are things that amazon's assistant is good at that google's is not and vice versa so it'd be nice to have both in my room and um And I also have, and it'd also be nice to have that downstairs as well. And I've already got that because I've got an Amazon tap that I could just plug into the charger. And I've got the, um, and I've got a Google Home Mini in the corner. And a lot of pe and a lot of people, I'm sure, are telling me, well, why don't I just go ahead and charge up my tap since it is portable and just move it around? My problem is. I will most likely forget to bring it back up or vice versa that I'll go down, you know, head downstairs without it. Um, so it would just be nice to have the both of them in the area at all times. Plus the display gives you additional information. Like if you ask for a weather for weather, it gives you a five day forecast, which is really nice. Um, and there is a built-in screen reader and built-in screen magnifier in the home hub. So if anything does happen to my vision, you know, I'm still covered. One of the other things that I'm considering is getting a new Chromebook, but that wouldn't be happening until the end of this year, by which time Snapdragon Chromebooks, AMD Chromebooks, um, and a whole bunch of other things would be out. At the moment, I've got quite a few on my top list. I've got the Asus Chromebook C434, which is the successor to the C302 that I'm currently recording this video on. Um, 
But I'm also I'm thinking about getting something smaller. I will say that this does have a bigger screen. It's got a 14 inch screen, which I really like. It's got a standard A USB port, Type A, if I need that. It's got a hopefully all metal keyboard design, faster processor. Um, it's a little heavier for some odd reason. But um, but so far, people are really looking forward to this, myself included. Um, but I'm also looking at possibly going smaller because if my vision holds, then I shouldn't need to zoom in near as much as I used to. To that end, I've actually selected a couple of other Chromebooks. I've selected the Asus C214 of Flip Chromebook. I have looked at the HP X360. Um, let me see if I got this right. X360 G2 11 double E. And the double E is the one with the um, flip, the flip uh, touch screen. And the one without the 2E designation is not. Um, and then I've got the Acer Chromebook, um, 11, 5, 15, or 512, excuse me, Acer Chromebook Spin 512. There are so many of these coming out, I'm having a hard time keeping them all straight. So what do all these have in common? Smaller screen, which as I said, I presume in my vision holds... Um, it wouldn't be a problem for me to navigate. Smaller footprint. Ruggedized form factor. That is one of the main draws on these for me. And hopefully pretty darn good battery life. And some of these do come with styluses. Now, why is all that important? Because the Chromebook that I currently have is a flip. And it turns out that they've done some really clever things with the magnification. So, I am going to flip my monitor over and I am going to zoom in and pan around. This is one of the most awesome things that I have ever been able to do because this is a system wide, look at this, system wide pinch to zoom. Why can't other touchscreen magnifiers do this? Even Apple. Even Apple. You have to do a double touch and hold or some such thing. I personally just use the controller and once I have a, 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 a zoom level picked on Apple, I just stick to it. Not with this. Not with this. Look, I can just pinch to zoom throughout the whole system. I mean, why hasn't anybody thought of this before? And this is just awesome. So another really cool thing is um, you probably saw the red ring around the arrow. If I switch us back into the normal mode, you can zoom in here, pan around. Then I'm going to go here. And you probably see this red ring around the cursor. So we've got cursor tracking, we've got button tracking. If I copy some of this text here, and I can bring it in to this app, Voice Aloud Reader, and if I click this button here, the little clipboard. Not attempt to repair or bring or open this case. This product contains no user serviceable parts. Any unauthorized attempt to service or release internal components will avoid the product warranty. So I can use the keyboard for fixed amounts, or I can pinch to zoom like so. And I can copy from the clipboard, or I can do this. So I'm going to go back to the touch screen. I'm going to go to complete touch screen mode now. That click, everything 
has been confirmed and now the interface is going to change you probably saw that the top menu uh, items with the close and minimize and whatnot that's gone and now I'm going to open up Firefox and we have an article here it says Apple Pay will soon work at Target, Taco Bell and more locations so covering 74 percent of top US merchants so what I can do here is this is the Android equipped version of Firefox so I just go up here to the three dots double tap and double tap here on the app voice aloud icon Oops. Apple Pay will soon work at Target, Taco Bell, and more locations, covering 74% of top U.S. merchants stash 9 to 5 Mac. Apple has shared the latest progress with Apple Pay rolling out to major U.S. retailers. Today's news includes Target, Taco Bell, Speedway, and more of the latest businesses to accept Apple's payment platform. Whoosh, street cleaner. Apple announced the news this morning in the newsroom post. Target, Taco Bell, IV Supermarket. Uh, the only thing to get used to in this regard is um, sometimes you got a double tap instead of a single tap, which is interesting, kind of weird. Um, so if I flip this back over to the regular mode you can see the menu options came back and I can zoom in here with the keyboard and I'm going to go back to Engadget through Firefox mobile and or actually 9to5 Mac excuse me and I'm going to go up here to the search because I want to show you something. So I'm going to search. And if I click on the search item. Oh, it doesn't work in Firefox. Interesting. So let's um, let's go out of this because there is there is one thing that I wanted to show you. And that was cursor tracking for the text editing windows. And like I said, for some reason, it doesn't work in Firefox. And this is the only bug. Well, this is the only other bug, I should say, that I've found which is the cursor sometimes gets jammed. I don't know. I don't understand why it does that, but I've figured out to get out of that. I can just take two fingers and pan the screen and that fixes it right up. So I'm going to zoom back out here and I am going to go into Chrome and I am going to zoom in, pan, go back. Let's go to a search bar up here, and there we go. This is the blue text ring, and you can type in Elbrail 14, search, you know, pretty simple stuff. But the point I'm trying to make is you've got your button, you've got your button cur uh, tracking with the orange square. You've got cursor tracking with the red ring. You've got text cursor tracking with the blue ring. And you've got reading features with that voice aloud reader. From a low vision perspective, I would say that covers everything, everything that Zoom text or magic can offer. And it's all built in, with the exception of the app voice reader app, which has to be downloaded from the Google Play Store. Um, everything else that comes built in to Google Chrome OS. And like I said before, you utilize the pinch to zoom gestures. I have not found a more fluid navigation interface on really any computer. Like I said, not even Apple's touch driven magnifier is that simple they've got something similar in the form of the controller and you can do a three finger pan but the zoom in and zoom out with such fluidity is just not there i don't know why it's not there but it's not there um so there's that and then also it is a fair question to ask i think why isn't google ahead in the assistive technology uh, space because let's face it my university uses uses google for their uh, email system 
I've been using Gmail privately for the last, you know, good long time. I'm sure a lot of us have. And, you know, all this craziness about, you know, data tracking, et cetera, it scares the living daylights out of us. But realistically, if you if we think about it too much, we wouldn't be able to get our work done. So let's look at it this another way. Let's say that hypothetical scenario here, okay, that we opted in to the necessary data tracking to provide services such as if you are blind and you are in a pizza parlor, the system and Google together would know this and they would say, hey, he's at, you know, one, two, three pizza. We should bring up the menu. We, you, you shouldn't even have to... Um, you know, ask. You know, a sighted person they don't have to they don't have to ask about accessibility for a menu. I mean, sometimes they do. I'm sure if the if the uh, if they want a specific type of menu. But as as somebody who's blind, you know, you got to be more on top of things. It seems to me like with Google's leverage of data, they should build a system in such a way where you don't even need to worry about it. You literally just walk into, and again, this is presuming you opted in, um, but you should be able to just walk into a place and then pick out your smartphone. And the instant you do that, they they give you an alert saying, hey, we've just seen you've entered one, two, three pizza. Would you like an accessible menu? You know, or if you're in a wheelchair um, and you're trying to plan your route, and Google has information based on the, again, the opt-in that you did, again, hypothetical scenario, um, to, if, if they, they, they would have enough information to say, hey, we have history to believe this place isn't wheelchair friendly. Why don't you try this place? You know, I, I, and I think that, that that's the sort of um, usefulness of data tracking that I honestly think would be a very good thing, you know? So, I mean, think about it with, with why isn't Google out in front with all, with all the stuff and all the knowledge they have, it seems to me like they should be out in front. They should be leveraging all their technology, all their artificial intelligence stuff to bring life, um, bring it, bring in more, um, productive and peaceful life for people with disabilities, they should be out appling Apple. And yes, I just said appling. That's that's a word now. It's a thing. Um, they should be out appling Apple with their massive database. They could build a truly innovative, accessible system, one where, like I said, you don't even have to think about your needs. It knows, like with a Chromebook, for instance, um, you walk up to a Chromebook or into or log into an Android device, and it knows based on your account history and your device's um, history, like, hey, I see that you logged into a new device. I know that you have these settings, this customization, this font size, this theme. Let's turn it all on for you. You know. Now, yes, I know that there. I know that you can back that all up. But I personally have never tried that, so I don't know what the details are. But I do think that you just like you shouldn't even have to worry about it. It should just happen. You know, a lot of sighted people, they don't even think about this sort of stuff because they don't have to. We, we should be at that same at that same level where we don't have to think about it. It just happens. The technology knows our needs and can provide for us our needs so that we can focus on the content, we can focus on the work, we can focus on the play without needing to set anything up. You know, it just seems to me like that is the sort of thing that if if we're if it were done properly and responsibly, I think that such such a use that would be the number one use of data collection in my mind. If if that were done responsibly, I think that that could be a real you know, a real plus that, that would be just awesome. But what do you guys think of any of this? Thank you for watching. Come and so welcome and have a nice day.